San Francisco has basically settled in as a seven-point favorite. Since 2000, there have been 18 conference title games with a spread of six or higher. Five of those 18 dogs went outright. The last one, the Bengals over the Chiefs, two years ago with seven-point dogs. Prior to that, the big favorites had won nine of the 10, last 10 straight up. Very few big conference title games have outright upsets. So, you know, I feel like you really like the Lions here. And I am waiting on confirmation for Debo Samuel before I go all in on the Niners. If yeah, Debo Samuel think... plays, does it change your opinion? No, I, I, I don't think it matters to me. But um, I get what you're saying, though. The trends obviously say it's a big deal if Debo's in this offense. But Ayuk's been so good this year, and so is Kittle. It's like they'll be able to figure it out, right? Like Debo can't be that big of a deal. Um, a guy who only gets four to five touches a game. But like you said, the stats say he is pretty important to that team, and they, they're they different when he's on the field. It's like, well, that makes sense. Debo's one of the best receivers on football. So um, I get why you're you're worried about it, but I saw Schefter tweeted out that it's, he's 50-50 to play. That means he's Dude. like 75. Oh, yeah. Listen, yeah. I'm, I'm checking Debo's status reports – more frequently than I check the status of my kids 529. Like I am <laughs> I am all over the internet machine looking for updates. And yeah, 50-50, the x-rays were negative. He's right. lifting his head above, his arm above his head. I can't even do that with my shoulder. Like I feel like he's going to play. Yeah, when I saw that he was 50-50 from Shefty, I was like, okay, that means he's a 75% chance he's going to play. Like if, if he's 50 50 this early that that's a high percent of chance he's gonna play so yeah um yeah if you're if you're back in that I feel pretty good I mean you obviously got the best of the number the six and a half it it's moved to seven now and it's just staying at the seven um if if Chad's right and the books value Debo like he does it could drop half a point if Debo is ruled out this could drop back down to six and a half but um I still I just cannot see this getting a seven and a half unless they really need Lions money that's when I'll get the seven and a half. The books are really feeling imbalanced, but this is the, these, these ones are always harder to play because the biggest liability, every sports book guy I talk to right now, every, you know, every book, their biggest liability right now are the 49ers futures, right? It was the bills. The bills was the one they needed killed. That was killed. Now it's the 49ers. Like that's their biggest liability. Um, Super Bowl future wise. So it's, it's pretty interesting where they, they probably made this line what it is because of that. Right. Like to take a little bit of the money on the other side, I believe in the app, it was like 75% of the bets, 67% of the money was on the Lions money line. So clearly a ton of money is coming in the Lions money line at this point. But um, if we're just looking at X's and O's, I love the matchup for the Lions offense. Like everything the 49ers can do well they have a piece to counter it. Like they have the they have two different running back styles that can counter to whatever type of run defense the 49ers are trying to play. And the, the fact that Laporta, he's come back from that in, knee injury. And, you know, even last week, he would take these really rough hits and get up limping a little bit. You know, five, six plays later, I'd see him running full speed downfield. It's just like the guy's a freak. Like he's got a banged up knee and he's just playing through it. Um, he, he, to me, is going to be the big difference here. Where I don't think they have a guy that can cover him. Like they can't, they can't use Fred Warner to cover him because they need Fred in the middle covering these two running backs. So there's just a bunch of different looks they can use to go against this team that I think will be able to keep it close. But the the fear here is just the Lions defense. Like if Purdy, if Purdy's got it going and Kyle Shannon's in his bag and, and we always talk about those first 30, 40 scripted plays, those, those plays were against Green Bay, right? Green Bay really were prepared to stop those plays. Yeah, but don't, don't forget, mean, don't forget again, those plays included Debo Samuel. The, the first three plays, Green Bay had no answer for. McCaffrey, long run. Yeah. Debo, long run. Debo, long pass. And then he's out. Like, they right. were marching. And that's what you're looking at here, where it's just like, the Lions, I feel the same about the Green Bay. Like, Green Bay, the reason we like the 49ers, we're like, the Green Bay is never going to be able to get stops. Like, they don't have the guys to get stops, and – that's my fear here with the Lions team. It's like the Lions really don't have the guys that get stops. Like their big X factor on their defense is, you know, what is he, a second-year player at this point? Um, it's just 
I, again, I love Hutchinson. I love their pass rush, but it's like, I'm just, I'm a little worried about this Detroit defense and getting stops, but I have such confidence in their offense right now. It's like at seven, at seven points, I have to take it. And, um, you know, I think Matt Mitchell gave it to us before he came on here about that stat, like the Bengals are the last team to win outright as a big dog. Like it, it's tough for me to tell you to take this line's money line, but I do think they're a live dog. Like, we saw Brock Purdy had a little bit of the deer in headlight looks last week, right? And he did pull it out at the end of that game. Like, he made that drive. And that's something the four should be feeling good about him. But it's just like, this isn't Mahomes. This isn't Lamar, right? This is like, this is what we talk about with a game manager. Like, this is why he was a late-round pick. He does have some weaknesses that teams can't exploit. It's all about, can you beat Shanahan? Like, when Shanahan's system's clicking – and like Chad said, when Debo is in there, it's really hard to get stops. There's just so many weapons on that team where it's like it really all comes down to Purdy and what kind of game he's going to have. Because I'm looking at weather right now, Chad. It's supposed to be a perfect winter day there in uh, San Francisco. Like we, we talk about the splits with golf outdoors. This would be as if he's playing an indoor game. Like there's no weather. It's going to be a perfect day, perfect sunny day or I guess night. Um, I, I'm really not worried about golf being outdoors here. It's really – my fear is this Lions defense. Like, I'm just – I am scared I'm going to, you know, roll over. It's going to be 21 to 7, and it's just like, well, that was a dumb bet. Like, I should have known better going against this 49ers defense with this Lions defense. But um, I just – right now, I believe in golf and this Lions offense where it's like they got all their pieces. Um, you know, I know they had a couple injuries to their offensive line, which obviously is a, a big deal going against – one of the best best front fours in all of football with the 49ers have, but it's just like when you look at on paper, it's um, pretty incredible how good the science teams perform this year. And once again, I'll go back to my notes. Um, they have struggled against really good defenses this year. And we saw when they went to play that Ravens team, they were dominated and golf could not move the ball. But I just, I think it's going to be different, especially when we talk in, Campbell, right? Like he knows our seven point dog. Even in the second half or the first half, it feels like if it's the second quarter, they're on their own 40 and they have three yards to gain. I feel like Campbell's going to go for it, Chad. Like I feel like he's going to lay it all out there and just really go for it and put pedal to the metal. So um, that's another reason it's giving me confidence taking this big number in the seven, where it's like, I just feel like even if we're out of it, he's just going to keep go going. Where the same thing we felt with the Bucks last week, where it's like, even when the Bucks were down by 14, I think you felt the same way where it's like, I feel like they're still going to score here. Like, I feel like they're still going to get the ball downfield. And it's going to come down to a two pointer. It's probably going to come down to another two pointer. If you're back in this big dog here, where it's like, you know, Campbell gets that touchdown. He's not kicking the extra point. We're not getting a push here. He's, he's definitely going to go for the two. So um, it's interesting. They move this number all the way up to seven. I, I think it's not only protect against futures, but it's like, you know, the public, they're going to come in and hammer this 49ers team. They're on paper. They're clearly the better team. It's just the between the storyline, the fact that Goff has been to a Super Bowl, the fact that Campbell takes these higher risk, like he's just willing to go for all these fourth downs. I, I just – I have to take the plus seven on this Lions team. Uh, Campbell going for it that frequently also potentially plays into the idea of the Niners covering, right? Because – he yeah. may go for it in those scenarios that you talked about. It's the Detroit side of the field, the 45-yard line, early in the third quarter. He decides they're going to go for it. All of a sudden, the Niners, are, the Niners go from up 7 to up 14 because the Lions right. don't know. No, they can easily roll them, right? Like that we both easily think roll. It, the easily the variance roll. in this. Yes. Very, like To me – there's not as much variance in the Ravens Chiefs. This could <laughs> no. be this could be 52 to 7. Yeah. It could be 52 to 49. And what what's interesting to me, there's two things on both sides of the ball. Which Lions fans don't get upset. I can see the Lions blowing out the other side too. Like we can totally. see a Purdy having a day from and then blowing out as well. But like Chad's right. Like I we could easily be down. 50 to seven ending the fourth quarter. No one would be shocked where it's like, yeah, well, that's when you live and die going for a fourth down in your own 20. Like it's yeah. just Campbell is that kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, I think that the, there's two interesting 
elements here defensively for both teams. The Niners' gift is getting the quarterback without blitzing. Third lowest blitz rate, fourth fewest blitzes in the NFL this year, but ninth most in sacks, right? So they do not need to bring extra pressure in order to get to Jared Goff, which means they can have a lot of help in the secondary yeah. defending against someone like Sam Laporta, defending against Amon Ra, St. Brown, defending deep against Jamison Williams. Like they can have the support they need and they've played a lot better in the defensive backfield this year than they have in years past. Steve Wilkes has focused on the defensive backfield in ways that D'Amico Ryans and Robert Sala hasn't done because they were so focused on that front seven, right? Number one. Number two, Detroit's defense. You mentioned it. That passing defense isn't just bad. They're great at pressuring. They don't get to the quarterback very much. A lot of QB pressures. Ninth most yards after the catch this season. Fifth most missed tackles. I'll say it again. Debo Samuel, what does he do? He breaks tackles. He gets yards after the catch. Christian McCaffrey, second most yards after contact in the NFL this season. Like, this offense is tailor-made to destroy and take advantage of what this Detroit defense is terrible at. Terrible! If Debo Samuel's playing. <laughs> but it's, we already saw this match with the Rams, though. And the counter to that is Detroit, they'll make you pay for every catch you can get, right? They're going to beat their shit out of you. And that's really their mentality. It's like, we know we're not that good and the guys are going to get theirs. Every time they touch the ball, they're going to pay for it. And it's worked. Like, even against that Bucks game, you saw a couple of alligator arms, right? A couple of guys yeah. going to catch the ball and they pull in because they know they're about to get leveled. And, like, that's just how Detroit's playing right now, which I love because they just know they don't have the talent. And it's like, in football, when you don't have the talent, you can do the other side of football, which is making it ugly and dirty and muddy, which is – a reason a lot of us love football. It's like that's the game at its core. It's a physical game, and you can wear out teams playing that way. And same goes for this 49ers team. Like Chad just said, it. it's like if their offense is humming, it's over. Like the Lions, they need turnovers. There's a lot of things their defense needs that the 49ers, like you just said, don't need. And that's why they are such a big favorite, right? That's They deserve to be this big of a favorite because of all the things we just talked about. But – it's just when I break it down, it's like there's so many things they can do to attack this 49ers defense that will be available. But you're exactly right. Like Chase Young, probably one of the best ads. Um, I mean, him and Sweat, like both those guys that left Washington have been dominant in their new homes. Like he's been really played great for them since he's joined them and this 49ers team. Like him and Bosa having that Ohio State connection, it's clearly worked, right? Like they always joke, one guy gets a sack, the other guy's egging on the other guy being like, all right, now it's your turn. And it's worked like Chase Young's come there and he's obviously he played much better this year than he had in previous seasons with Washington, but he looks like who we thought he was going to be this year. Right. He's been great against the pass, solid against the run, like everything they've hoped for when they traded for him. That is a big deal. Like you talked about the fact that they can get pressure with just their front four is a big deal. But I just look at the back end. Their secondary is not that good for, for 49ers and they've gotten away with it because of what you just talked about, where they only need to rush four and drop everyone else into the into coverage. Like, that's a big deal for this 49ers team. I don't think they can get away with it against this Lions team that can run the ball down your throat. Like, if they're trying to drop guys back, they'll bring Montgomery back in and just run it down your throat and pick up five or six yards per carry. I mean, we've seen them do that multiple times this year. And then what happens? If they bring the linebackers back down, they switch in Gibbs, who can catch the ball in the backfield, and as soon as he touches the ball, he's already hitting his 4-3 speed, right? Like, we saw it time and time again in that game. When they needed someone out of the backfield to catch the ball and make a big play, it's him. Like, these rookies they brought in, we talked all year about it. They've just been incredible. So, um, I've seen them be beat by good tight ends before. Now we have arguably the best tight end in all football coming in. So, there's just a bunch of stuff where it's like, I, I am scared about what Chad talked about with this Lions team on the defense. I just can't get past the fact they have all the pieces on offense to counter it. Like, they have the guys to get, this, get these points and keep this game close. So, 
Um, people can already tell. Obviously, I like the over in this game, but yeah, like the lines. I thought I could be talked out of it, like having a couple of pros reach out to me. But for the most part, it honestly seems like most pros like the Lions here at this big of a number because they think what I think, where it's like the books are giving us an extra point to point and a half of value here just because they are so heavily invested right now in all the futures tied to this 49ers team. So I'm going to take the free points of value and take the seven. 